viewers and random Doctor Who fans. Now today I'm going to be reviewing a figure from the first wave of the new fifth series of Doctor Who figures to be released, Amy Pond. Uh, here she is in her box, so first of all we're going to take a look at that. As you can see it's a lot smaller than the uh, previous boxes and uh, of course when the first Doctor Who figures came out they were uh, in similar packaging to this, uh, i.e. they had the plastic bubble at the front and the uh, card at the back. So uh, then they eventually went on to an entire uh, blister pack, which was of course all plastic. Now they've gone back to uh, plastic and cardboard again. No idea why. Uh, of course, as you can see, the new Doctor Who logo across the bottom here and Amy Pond written in orange. This seems to be the style that they've got for the... Uh, New packaging, I'm not too sure. Uh, up at the top here, as you can see, highly detailed posable figure. And just in case you were worried, uh, new figure. This isn't an old figure, it's brand new. Uh, BBC logo across the top here, and it's for ages 5 and up. There's Amy inside the box. As you can see behind her here, you can kind of see, it's not really the time vortex. It's uh, kind of like the vortex you saw uh, do you know in the Down the Rabbit Hole trailer, where they were sucked into the ground and flying through the air and a uh, uh, weeping angel exploded. I don't know what was going on. So it seems to be that type of vortex behind her here. Uh, taking a look around the side here, as you can see it says Amy Pond and... Uh, oh, it's messing. Mainly because I opened it, but there is the uh, DW logo across the side here. There it is there. <laughs> around the back here, as you can see, highly detailed posable figures. Uh, available figures include the 11th Doctor with Sonic Screwdriver, Amy Pond, the Weeping Angel, uh, Hawthorne... A Dalek Ironside, a Professor Bracewell with robotic revealed chest and swappable damaged arm. And Peter the Winder with hidden smiler face. I've got a look at all these today when I was down at Forbidden Planet. That's where I got this from. Uh, they all look pretty good. Uh, I was going to get a Dalek Ironside as well, but I decided not to. Mainly because it's the same design as the uh, Daleks in the previous series. And I've got loads of them already. So eventually, maybe somewhere along the line, whenever a cheaper one... Uh, it does get cheaper, I probably will buy it. But as of now, I'm, I'm holding out for one of the new design jacks, particularly a red one. Uh, what I was really impressed with was Professor Bracewell, because he comes with uh, the different features and the swappable chest, which was pretty cool. Uh, maybe by character options and the official Doctor Who seal of approval. But I've uh, went on and on about the box for too long now. So uh, let's crack it open and take a look at Amy herself. Okay, here she is out of her box. As you can see, quite small... Uh, in size. Uh, she does feel quite small, but uh, I think she is she probably is in scale with practically every other uh, uh, model of this scale to be released. Uh, taking a look out here, as you can see, no, you probably can't see it really well because my camera is pathetic, but uh, face sculpts really well. She's kind of got this sort of non plus look on her face, which you normally see on most figures this size. Uh, the jacket's detailed really nicely. I like the sort of like little crumpled effect there on her uh, leather jacket. And on the other side, as you can see, uh, the sleeves have been rolled up, so uh, nice detail there. Also little pockets as well, little lapels, which is quite nice. Also, if you look nice and closely in there, you can kind of see she's wearing a little necklace too, which is quite cool. And, uh, of course, nice material there on her jacket and on her mini skirt. And uh, on her belt, as you can see, the buckles details really well. And uh, across the back here as well, you can see she's got pockets in her uh, denim skirt. The hair is detailed beautifully. You can't. My camera really doesn't do it justice. But uh, if you can take a look, there you can see it's uh, it's actually split. You can see it's been combed back behind her ear, and then this part of her hair has been allowed to dangle over, which is uh, really nicely designed. Her legs are designed really well. The only problem is, uh, see her cowboy boots here. I don't know if you can see it, but the paint's kind of it's kind of a bit of a rubbish paint job because. The uh, flesh tone from her legs is kind of mixed with the uh, the brown of the cowboy boots. Of course, on the bottom here, she's got the standard little hole in her heel for uh, if you ever want to stand her up in a uh, figure pose. As far as articulation goes, uh, her head can kind of rotate, but it's a bit of a nuisance. Mainly because of her hair. Uh, if you have the Donna Noble figure from Series 4, you'll know what I mean. It uh, kind of prevents her from turning her head. She can turn it. But uh, I'd advise against it because it kind of warps her hair there, as you can see at the back. Uh, her arms do move 360 degrees rotatable. Uh, her kind of forearm here, just, just at her elbow, rotates around 360 degrees. It's kind of held on by a mushroom cap. Uh, she does have a bend here at her elbow, and she can move her arm in and out up here at the uh, at the bicep. Same for the other arm. Uh, as far as the leg articulation goes, again, it's kind of hindered by the uh, by the skirt. But as you can see, she kind of can do the splits, but not really. And uh, her knee bends to a uh, 45 degree angle, and there is no rotation on her feet. So uh, that's Amy Pond.
Uh, as far as size comparison goes, here she is alongside the 11th Doctor. As you can see, nicely to scale, as well as the flight control TARDIS behind me here. So as you can see, she fits inside quite well. As you can see, that's her inside the flight control TARDIS. This is the uh, kind of pose that I'd like my uh, figures to be in when I have them up on display. Uh, so in summary, I really like this Amelia Pond figurine. It's uh, extremely well detailed, very accurate. Uh, if you have an 11th Doctor, it doesn't matter if you get him uh, in the single pack like this, or with the 11th Doctor's Crash Set, which was released down in the series. Uh, it's, it just sets off the collection really well. Of course, your Doctor's going to need a companion. Uh, hopefully, they're going to release a Rory Williams figure. I'd uh, really like that as well, to have the three of them sort of together. And uh, also, if you have a flight control TARDIS, uh, it just sets off the piece incredibly well. So as I say, as you can see, it sets off the collection incredibly well, and uh, definitely a figure that I would recommend. Uh, so thanks very much for watching my review, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, there are countless others online, including Doctor Who reviews. Uh, I've also reviewed the 11th Doctor's Crash Chat, I've, released the, I've reviewed the Sonic Screwdriver, and uh, pretty much all the uh, things you see in front of you here, including Matt Smith and the, uh, and the TARDIS. Uh, so thanks very much for watching, bye-bye. Well,